Hello everybody, this is Jeremy Taylor from The DAW. Welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Emacs EQ from Plugin Mix. This is a really cool plugin and it has a lot more capabilities than any normal standard EQ. So let's just jump in and take a look. All right, you guys, so this is the PNM Pro Series Emacs EQ. This is a very flexible, very powerful EQ, and it has a couple of bells and whistles that you won't see in your traditional digital EQ plugin. First off, let's go over the UI. This is a very simple and easy UI to understand. Every single node can go anywhere in the frequency spectrum from 20 to 20, and they all share the ability to be any band you want them to be. They can be a bell, a higher low shelf, a higher low cut, or even a notch filter. They also all have variable cues, so you can actually make them as tight or as wide as you want. This is very important for when you need to do surgical work or really wide boosts to enhance a performance. Now, besides that, there are a couple of other features that this EQ has that most other EQs don't. One of them is the ability to solo up the bands. This will essentially allow you to listen to only the EQ band that you're using and that you have soloed up, and you can do multiples in case you want to find multiple frequencies that you don't want. But this is a great way of finding and getting rid of any unwanted buildup in a track. Another feature that I find very, very useful is the ability to switch between minimum phase and linear phase mode. So that is a very welcome plus. Another thing that this EQ has that most other EQs don't have, in fact, this is the only one that I've seen that has done this, is the harmonic exciter. This is a low and high frequency harmonic exciter. And this essentially will add back the frequencies that you've cut out using your EQ. And it does it in a very smooth and subtle way. So this is a great way of adding back some warmth if you've made something a little bit too thin or adding a little bit of high end back in if you've made something too dull. The last thing is the ability to use this clipper. And this will essentially allow you to use the output to drive the plugin to gain some pretty interesting sounding distortion. That's pretty much all the secret little hidden gems that you have inside of this plugin. It's a very useful, very versatile EQ, and it works like a standard EQ, but some of these extra features really help it stand out against the others. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna show you how easy this is to work with. So I'm gonna solo up this vocal, and I'm gonna play it without any EQ. You're gonna hear that the vocal is a little bit muddy and doesn't actually sound quite right. There's a buildup in the low end and the lower mid-range frequencies that are very prominent. So let's take a listen to it right now. The man on the moon. All right, so hopefully you could really hear that. The low end is really out of control. So what we wanna do is we wanna tame that low end. So we're gonna make a low cut with our first band. I'm gonna turn on the listen function, and I'm also gonna turn this into a 12 dB octave slope. Next, what I wanna do is I wanna adjust the Q factor and this will control the initial peak that it has. And I'm gonna use the solo function to dial in just enough low end. Right around there sounds pretty good, but just in case, I'm gonna bump it up to 118 hertz. Next, I wanna to listen to the orange band or the second band. And this bell is essentially gonna get rid of the massive bump in the lower mid range. So here we go. So that's pretty noticeable, it's right there. And if I take it off listen mode, the man on the moon. you hear that it instantly actually cleans it up. So that's the proper frequency that I need to get rid of. In this case, we're only gonna do about a six decibel cut, which sounds like a lot, but you have to keep in mind that when you need to repair something, sometimes doing something in an aggressive manner is exactly what you need. Next, I wanna find the last frequency that's causing some issues. So we're going to solo up the red band and let's find that frequency. It sounds like around 500 is the culprit. So we're just gonna bring this down. And this one we're only gonna do by 3 dB. Now let's take a listen to this vocal before and then after. So here's before. The man on the moon. And here's after. The man on the moon. So it's a little bit cleaner, but I find that the low end is still a little bit too aggressive. So we're gonna bring down the cue. I'm gonna actually cut a little bit more. And this might seem a little bit aggressive at first, but you're gonna notice that it helps clean it up so much that we don't really mind it. The man on the moon. Now that we've cut out so much low end, let's add a little bit back using the low frequency enhancer 
and then we'll add just a little bit of high end using the high band. Let's take a listen now. Man on the move. Bypass it. Man on the move. Much cleaner. Next, I just need to bump up the output volume and let's take a listen to it in the mix with the EQ on and then bypass. Now let's bypass the EQ. You'll notice that as soon as I turn it back on, it instantly gets cleaner. Now we can actually focus on getting some processing in here to help it stand out of a mix without worrying about getting that really muddy or making that sound like there's a problem in it. So now we're gonna turn on all of the time-based effects and all of the original processing, and we're gonna use just this EQ to help clean it up. Let's take a listen to it with everything on. And we'll bypass the EQ. You'll notice that the time-based effects have a little bit of a wooliness to them, and it's actually going to cause some issues with the bass later on in the song. So this is a situation where you're really gonna wanna use the EQ to clean up the mix beforehand. That way, when you're stacking effects, you don't have to worry about cleaning up so much. Anyway, with all that said, that's gonna be it for this part of this video, and I will see you guys in a few seconds. All right, you guys, so that is the Pro Series Emacs EQ from Plugin Mix. I really like this EQ. I think that it has a lot of flexibility and it has some capabilities that not a lot of other EQs have. So with that said, that's gonna be it for this video. I highly recommend trying this out. This is Jeremy Taylor within the DAW, and I'll see you guys next time.